Welcome back, everyone. This is Dave from Corn Productions with my co-host Stacy here to talk about The Sinner, Season 4, Episode 3, titled Part 3. The episode's description reads as follows. Ambrose heads to the mainland to learn more about Percy's past and uncovers dark family secrets. The episode was written for television by Jenny Zhang and directed by Adam Bernstein. This is his last stint on the series. Uh, I'm kind of curious because recently I happened to be watching a House episode and there was an Andrew Bernstein. And I'm kind of curious if they were perhaps related. I couldn't, of course, tell you that. But the episode was originally aired on October 22nd. 2021. Before we go any further, I'll tell you, tell you a couple of things. One, this is not a sport free podcast. If you haven't watched the episode, I recommend you go and check it out and then come back and give us a listen. Secondly, if you're listening to one of the platforms this podcast is now available on, please subscribe. You can also head over to my YouTube channel, Corn Productions, where additional content can be discovered. If you're already on my YouTube channel, please like, share, and comment, as well as subscribing to our channel. All right, so I actually have a shout out for. All right. This. So, Ashley Wright uh -huh. uh, gave the the uh, password for uh, Sinner's Crossing, that was the first episode, and he mentioned in the other uh, episode that we did that it uh, it occurred to him that it must take a lot of research to uh, know all the actors' names and all the things that they've done, and while Internet Movie Database certainly makes that easier... It, yes, it does. It is a time-consuming process to look through all these people. It for is sure. time-consuming, and uh, we can only hope that we get somewhere close to right with everything right. we're saying. Right. And he said the series sounds interesting, but of course he doesn't have television show. He's uh, a television, so he's ne probably never going to be able to watch it. But nevertheless, thank you for watching us as usual, yeah. Ashley Wright. So, it's, it's awesome that he like listens to all of our things, even though he doesn't watch <laughs> most of these shows. Exactly. All right, so Stacy, your thoughts on this week's episode. Okay, so last week I was like, wow, this was a lot heavier in flashbacks than I thought. So again, this episode is mostly flashback. Mm -hmm. And the stories are so much more like self-contained than I kind of remembered them being. So last week was all about like her history with CJ. Yeah. This week is all about those three months that she lived on the mainland. Mm -hmm. And digging into that time in Percy's life and... I just feel like, oh, I didn't remember all of this happening, like, at the same time and being revealed at the same time. And I feel like we're a lot further into this story than I feel like we should be after three parts. Right. And in my head, I'm like, well, what, what are we filling the next five episodes with? Because mm -hmm. I don't feel like in my head there's enough things left to fill five more episodes because we've already covered so much of it. Right. I mean, clearly there has to be there something. There has to be. So, yeah, I'm not remembering, like, the, the pacing at which this story plays out, clearly. Well, the one thing that um, I, I I knew that Ambrose and Sonya were going to split up. Sure. It doesn't happen in this episode. But you can certainly see the seeds yeah. of how exactly that took place, take place in the, the course of this episode. Right. I mean, this is the beginning of the end for them right here. And it actually sort of started last episode when Harry decided to bring her more into the case. Yeah. It was a very big strategic error. It's kind of ironic uh, because Harry does that because he doesn't want to lose her. But by doing this, he actually causes uh, him to lose her, basically, right. by, by taking her more into this case. And yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting episode with uh, some interesting stuff going on. And yeah, I, uh, there's a lot that happened in this episode that I simply do not remember happening. But yeah, so yeah. Do we have anything else to say before getting into it? I have a lot to say about our guest cast yes. this week, but I will hit them as we meet those characters. Mm -hmm. A lot of characters that this is their only episode, yeah. Um, but a lot of fun, familiar faces. Yes. We have comments to talk about based on all of the other shows we cover, which of course is the whole reason we're talking about The Sinner. Yes. And the further we get into digging into like, you know, these under five line characters, mm -hmm. The more I'm like, yes, this was absolutely the right thing for us to do <laughs> because there's just so much crossover. Right. That it's it's just it's insane mm -hmm. how like these names keep popping up that that are in everything else we talk about. So right. it's really cool, and I just kind of super love the Nova Scotian film community at this point. Like yes. I'm all in on it. And uh, you know we're friends with a few of them. We so are. That, that's pretty cool stuff. It's very cool. All right, so this episode opens with. Ambrose, in the early morning, following Meg around, believing that she is lying to him. In fact, knowing that she is. Right. He's stalking out her house, waiting for her to leave. So he's mm. been on a stakeout probably all night. 
and uh she ends up leaving he follows her down to the docks mm -hmm. and ends up going on the ferry to the mainland with her kind of watching her from afar yeah he even has to call sonya and be like yeah i'm skipping out on the plans we had for today because i'm on a lead after he probably wasn't there all night already right, yep. right? uh when where he he sees he ends up after they get to the mainland he sees <coughs> her talking to someone and she gets handed an envelope yeah and um I put that they're they're on the docks, but later he's saying it was a construction site they were on. Yeah, I'm not really sure. Um, wherever they are, like, he's not really sure either. He's just following her around. She got this envelope. It is all kind of fishy, right? Mm hmm oh, Pun not intended. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, and he continues to follow her as she proceeds through her day. And, and next she goes to this house. She speaks with some woman at the door. We can't hear what they're saying, but the door, the woman slams the door on Meg's face. So it doesn't look like it was a great interaction. <laughs> and then Harry proceeds to go and talk to her after Meg leaves. I'm kind of curious how far away Meg was. At yeah, this I point. figure she had he had to have given up following her, right? Right. Because he he's rather going to talk to this woman because she had to have let Meg get far enough away that she wasn't going to know he's right behind her. So she doesn't seem very cooperative at first, but he asks her why Meg was there, and it turns out that this is in fact Percy's mother. Yes, this is Percy's mother. Uh, her name is Riza, and she is played by Amber Dunn. And this is the only episode that she appears in, which was a surprise to me, because I thought I remembered the mother story taking place over more than one episode, but yeah, apparently so. not. Um, she's in one episode of Digstown, which is one of those series that comes up all the time mm -hmm. for us. And I didn't see anything else uh, noteworthy for her. All right. Uh, so he ends up uh, talking... She ends up... He asks about his relationship with Sean. By the way, Sean, uh, the actor, his name is escaping uh, me. Neil Huff. Neil Huff. Okay, so I mentioned some things that he appeared in. And the real reason, I didn't mention the real reason that I recognized him. Okay. Which I didn't, it didn't occur to me until after the fact. That he has a pretty sizable role on The Wire. And that's why I know the guy. He's completely unrecognizable from his appearances in The Wire. But of course, I think that was like 20 years back. So it's not really that surprising that he looks significantly different than he did in his Wire's day. The Wire, uh, when he was on The Wire. <laughs> so uh, eventually I'm going to remember how to talk. Just so, Okay. Just, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> we'll get there. <laughs> so uh, basically, her relationship with Sean resulted in the pregnancy of Percy. Yeah, and she was... Uh... It was the summer between her junior and senior year of high school. She was 16 mm -hmm. years old. It was a summer fling. Right. So it was never anything serious between them. Meg was very critical uh, of her. And so she ended up just leaving. Yeah. Because she didn't she, feel wanted in this She says family. about a year later, she left and she went to the mainland, finished school, and basically started her, a whole family, started her life. And, you know, was never there for Percy. Although right. she seemed really kind of uh, upset to hear that Meg described her that way. Yet she confirms it's true. Mm -hmm. Like she wasn't there for Percy. Right. Now we do get the impression that Percy knows her. Like they they, right. they have, you know, interacted some, some during type, her life. Some type of relationship. But she definitely wasn't, you know, wasn't there for her. Wasn't an active role in her life. So she says that he doesn't know Meg Muldoon, but he will. And that's very ominous. <clears throat> And uh, he wants to know why did Meg come to see her today? Obviously, because he's suspicious of Meg at this point. Right. And uh, uh, Riza says that Meg came to ask if she'd seen Percy because, mm. and this clearly like shows you Meg is looking for Percy. She doesn't know where Percy is if she's going around looking for Percy. Right. right. So is, this kind of should take the blame, the like the suspicion off of Meg, um, but I don't think he sees it that way. No. Uh, so Percy got away from Meg by going to see her mother on the mainland. Right. So and... nine months ago when she left, this is the first place she came. <clears throat> she came to her mother's house. And this is where we start our flashback. And we're going to have lots and lots of flashbacks right. in this episode. So we flashback to the first day after Percy left the island. She came to the mainland and she shows up on her mother's doorstep. Right. Uh, Percy's mother ends up saying that she had a big wad of cash. Uh, but she ends up... <coughs> well... I don't, my, I don't understand why my throat is so dry right now, but, um, yeah, so 
Uh, we meet Percy's two half sisters mm -hmm. during this scene. Right, and they're quite a bit younger than Percy is. Yeah, so I'm going to talk about them. Um, the sister's names, the older sister is named Emily, and the younger sister is named Violet. Um, Emily is played by Charlie Boyle. And okay. this is the only episode we see her in, that makes sense. Yeah. That's the only episode we see the mom in. This, this young actress has 35 acting credits already. That's pretty absurd. Yeah. There's some adult actors that don't have that many credits. Right. Um, she's in an episode of The Mist, an episode of Moonshine. Right, which, which is, comes up frequently. Comes up a lot. She has several appearances in different peanut specials, playing a character named Violet. Huh. So she has like a recurring voice actress career already. That's crazy. Uh, she's been in a couple of Christmas movies. And the thing... Her last name stood out to me, and I was like, I wonder if, and I was right, I looked it up, she is the big sister of Oliver Boyle. Oh, I'm, okay. So, so Oliver, she's the one that ran away? No, no, she's the literal, real-life sister. Oh, oh okay, so not, not in. She's not know. in anything we've covered. Right. But she's, so this is, again, Charlie Boyle I'm talking about. Her younger brother is Oliver Boyle. Okay. Who played Remy Smith in right. Sullivan's Crossing, and he's uh, the in, boy in pink. Right. In Don, her dad, and the tracker. Mm -hmm. So acting family here i don't know if they have parents that are in the biz they probably do since both of them are uh very uh you know very involved so early on in their lives <laughs> um but yeah big props to to both uh oliver and his sister charlie because they're doing amazing things and uh, the other sister here is played by estelle trudel again this is the only episode we see her in she was in two episodes so far of Sullivan's Crossing. She plays young Lola. Oh, okay. Yeah, so when we have the flashbacks of Lola in episode 110, and uh, so far in season two, she's appeared in episode 203. So, spoiler for us, we're going to get to go back to young Lola again. I mean, I, I think that's not really much of a spoiler. It's not much of a spoiler. You, you assume that we would revisit that time period? Yeah, so uh, this actress plays plays young Lola, which is pretty cool. That is pretty oh, cool. Okay. Uh, okay, so basically, it seems like she's going to stay there with her mother yeah, uh, and, for a while. And the mom doesn't introduce her to the sisters. They don't know she's their sister. She's right. like, oh, this is a friend of mine. She's going to stay with us. Probably because it's way too complicated to explain yeah, to the so kids. Yeah, so whatever but... relationship Percy has with her mother, does not extend she's to her never sisters. met the sisters. Yeah. So that's kind of sad. It is. Um, and, and we know that, the, there's also an older brother named Paul, and he's away at college, so Percy's staying in his room, and, uh, she has this, like, weird interaction where she's like, oh, yeah, he's my oldest. I mean, my oldest with my husband. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. Because, <laughs> you know, you're my oldest. Right. Uh, it was, it was a very awkward interaction, but she's stepping up here. You know, Percy mm -hmm. showed up at her door needing help, and she's there to help her. Mm -hmm. And you get the impression she feels bad that she was never a mother. To I mean, this woman. I'm sure she does. And, yeah. and uh, she's ready to step it up, and she's she's going to be there for her, let her stay with her, and she's basically like, we'll figure it out in the morning. But Percy was gone by the time Riza woke up in the morning. And she ends up getting a postcard for an address that's 20 minutes away, but she never ended up visiting for a variety of reasons. Yeah. Life just got in the way. And it's... she probably it goes back to her just feeling guilty about not mm. being in this woman's life. And probably, I'm going to guess, feeling like she didn't deserve to be at that point. So Harry ends up going and visiting this address and ends up meeting a roommate that uh, Percy met on Craigslist, and I'm sure you have information All on right, her. All right, the roommate's name is Caroline, and Caroline is played by Nev Wilson. Uh, again, this is the only episode that we're going to see this character in. Uh, Nev was in one episode of Diggs Town. She was in eight episodes of Grease, Rise of the Pink Ladies. Interesting. Yeah, that's a. That is that was, related to Grease the movies or yeah, Grease it the was, play? It was a um, like a serialized. It was just like last year or two years ago. Okay. Um, I don't think it got renewed. I don't know. I didn't <laughs> watch it, but um, she was in twenty three episodes of Degrassi: The Next Generation. Huh, okay. And she I remember in, watching a few episodes. She was in an year. episode of Warehouse Thirteen. Right. I loved that show. Yep. Uh, two episodes of Falling Skies, which I mentioned a lot of the cast from this show was in that series. Mm -hmm. And she was in four different Saw movies, parts three, four, five, and six. Wow. I didn't recognize the character's name. I'm assuming it's a cop because I think those are the only ones that really recurred other than like the main cast. Okay. 
Uh, so yeah, she's she's been in lots of things. All right, so we see a flashback and their relationship as it develops, which leads them to a club where they seem to be having fun, but Percy starts to act weird and paranoid. Uh, she wouldn't leave the house, but eventually manages to get her out of the, out to the club again. And she hugs her and says she wants to thank her because she's seen she's been really nice to her. This kind of seems like the thing that you like you do when you think you're gonna die or never see a person. Yeah, so again. basically, like, like Caroline's like, yeah, we were cool, we were roommates, mm -hmm. but then she just started getting really weird. Yeah, right. Like Caroline's like, I don't really know this girl. Mm -hmm. She only lived here a couple months, and things got really kind of strange during that time. And so right. Percy was saying that she was seeing someone, like there was somebody after her. Right. Um, they were working together at a clothing store and Percy was like, oh, I can't let that man know I'm here. Hide me from him. Caroline never saw the man. Uh, at this point, uh, Harry thinks her, that it's CJ. So she's asking, oh, have, did she ever mention the name CJ Lamb? Cause that's the only male suspect that, you know, Harry has on his mind. Um, of course, knowing the truth that we know, which I'm not going to spoil it here, but it's right. just, it's so sad. Yeah. Um, yeah. She ends up spotting a man in a hooded sweatshirt, and after that, she just disappeared. Okay. Now, during the scene... During the scene? Yes. So exciting. Yep. Excited for this part. Uh, it's it's so funny how anybody who's listening to this to actually, like, hear about the sinner is probably like, what is wrong with these people? <laughs> that they just stop and keep talking about these, like, insignificant actors, right? Right, yep. Uh, but that's where we're at, because mm. these people are significant to us, because... Again, that's why we're talking about the sinners for right. all of these actors from Nova Scotia. Um, so I was taking notes on this episode, and they were in the club scene, and it's literally just the blink of an eye. I saw a face I recognized, and mm -hmm. I stopped and rewound, and I was like, "Is that who I think it is?" It's it's a background actor, not somebody in the credits because you don't get a credit unless you have a line. Right. So not a name that we're picking up when we're going through IMDb. But I recognize this person's smile. <laughs> the billion dollar smile. Uh, so anybody who has watched From, if you are watching this episode about the sinner and you're, you know, spilled over here because you watch From, we have Smiley Monster himself. Yes. Jamie McGuire popping up in this episode. He is at the club. Caroline, the roommate, is dancing with him. Lucky girl. In, uh, this is the second club scene. Mm-hmm. The one where, you know, she got her to go back out to the club. And I imagine both club scenes were filmed the same day. They probably have all the same background in them. I wouldn't think they would have, you know, done that twice. Right. Uh, so he might be in the other scene somewhere, too. But this is where I saw him. He's dancing with Caroline. If anybody wants to look at this, again, we're in episode three of The Sinner. And the timestamp I grabbed was 1633. I wanted to grab a screenshot of it, but Netflix wouldn't let me do that. Um because they are, you know, very like, no, you can't take pictures of right. of our work. But um, there he is. You just see the side profile of his face and this big smiley monster smile being so excited to dance with Caroline. And if you blink, you'll miss it. But he's there. I recognized him. I messaged Jamie McGuire and I said, did you film a, a club scene on The Sinner? Because I wasn't, <laughs> I recognized him, but I didn't want to get it wrong, right? right I didn't want to yep. say that's him and it's not him. So I messaged him and he right away was like, yeah, I did. Uh, and I was like, that's so cool. I recognize you. <laughs> yep. So that is pretty awesome. We have Jamie McGuire smiling himself, smiling at Caroline with his billion dollar smile. So if you haven't watched The Sinner, that's reason enough to go check it out for the three frames of Jamie McGuire you're yes, going to get. <laughs> absolutely. That's totally why you should watch this 10 or 8 episode series. <laughs> All right. So Harry goes back to the mainland and on the boat, hallucination Percy talks to Ambrose. She says, if something happened to her, oh yeah, he says, if something happened to her, there needs to be consequences. She asks why it's important to her, and that's really him asking himself right. that question. He says, people come into this world just trying to survive, and the world takes them out like they just don't care. And she says, sometimes it's easier if you just disappear. Right. Um, and to back up just one second, uh, from the, the, the whole flashback thing before he leaves, we learned that when Caroline went home that morning, mm -hmm. Percy was gone and her room was trashed. The mirror was broken. It looked like there was a struggle. Right. Uh, and Caroline never heard from Percy again after that. You think she had called the police? 
You would think so. If your roommate disappeared and her room was wrecked. Yeah, um, that might be something you might be slightly concerned about. Like, right. maybe this person was murdered and you should, like, call the police. Uh, but yeah. apparently she didn't, and she was never heard from again. And um, we know Percy went back home. Like, we already knew that, right? right. She was there for three months, and then she ended up back home for the last six months. But at this point... Harry's questioning, okay, what was the struggle? It was that man, that man that she saw must have followed her back to her apartment and there was some struggle and now she ended up home. So he's trying to fill in all the dots now of what happened after she went home. Mm -hmm. And that's really where we are with the rest of this episode is him trying to piece together the rest of this story about Percy's adventures on the mainland. So Harry goes back to the mainland and goes... Back to the island. Back to the island, I should say. (laughs) And uh, yeah, and we see Raskin for the first time in this episode... Raskum takes him out to Percy's car, and they find some more random objects uh, where, where Percy's car was. Right, the, they they uh, had found some, some more artifacts there, very similar to uh, the ones that Percy had left by the cliffs. And we didn't get into the details, but I saw uh, there was a bird skull, there was a, a broken piece of a hair comb, mm-hmm. um, I think what was a shell. Something like that. And there was a razor blade. Mm-hmm. And he asked raskin about night swimming and he describes his story of what uh what he heard and saw and raskin knows nothing about yeah this. and he doesn't know how to describe this any better than we do when right. we were talking about those scenes and raskin is basically implying that he thinks this is some kind of weird sex thing basically uh but yeah so but harry says he thinks these artifacts might be related to the night swimming because it right. seemed like they were doing some sort of ritual he mm-hmm. said harry returns to sonya who was hanging out with Greta, but we don't see Greta, nor we, do we see Kim Roberts, who played her. Yeah, we don't see her again. Right. Which I was surprised at when we saw that she was only in the first two episodes. I was mm-hmm. like, oh, I thought this character continues. But maybe that's why. Maybe we keep talking about her. Right. Even though she's not there. I've seen her more because I'm up to that season of being Erica that she's in every episode. <laughs> <laughs> so, Sonya reveals that Meg... Oh, not Sonya. Sonya does not re- reveal that. Uh, Harry reveals that Meg has been lying to him. And he wants to go and talk to her on the way to a restaurant. They have reservations. And he convinces 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 Sonya to go along with this. Yes. And this was a just a very huge, reluctantly, she agrees. This is a huge mistake on Harry's part. Uh Harry and Sonya go to see Meg at her house. She asks them in and uh She invites them to stay for yeah, dinner. Yeah. And Sonya tries to get out yeah, of it. Yeah, she's like, we've got dinner reservations. And he's like, oh, we can cancel them. Right. <laughs> like, take a hint, Harry. Right. Your girlfriend does not want to be here. And you shouldn't be doing this in the first place. Not with her anyway. Uh, Colin, Sean, and I guess Colin's girlfriend is there? Um, This is Colin's girlfriend. Her name is Rhonda. Now, we already met her in episode one. But she was one of the people we didn't Kinda... pick up on who okay. she was. So, Rhonda is... Colin's girlfriend. She was in episode one. She's in this episode. We're going to see her again in episode six. Uh, And she's played by Nikki Barnett. And we talked about her already when we covered episode one. Okay. So dinner starts normally enough. Normal conversation. Sean ends up taking a phone call. And when he returns, he's saying that CJ cut all their traps. Right. So it was Raskin calling. Right. Okay. To tell them that their, their traps have been cut. Now, he didn't say CJ did it. That's the assumption, basically. Right. Uh, who is this who's talking, took the call? Sean. 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 Sean's saying, oh, it was CJ. Mm-hmm. I keep, you know, I keep mixing up Sean and Colin's names. Con- he didn't, <laughs> he didn't actually even call him C- by CJ. He didn't call him by name. I thought basically, he did. He basically called him the lamb kid. Okay. Is basically, so it's basically, they're saying it's CJ who did it. And, uh, sh- Basically, Colin will say that this will cost them financially thousands of dollars. Sean makes a big statement about how he won't do it, though we don't know what he's talking yeah, about. Yeah, so Sean's about to say too much. Right. Right? I mean, mm-hmm. we know that there's a big secret here that they don't want to talk about in front of Harry. Yeah. So Sean's about to say too much. Colin quiets him. And dinner's pretty much ruined by this point. Right. We proceed to have very awkward conversations right. from here on out. Harry turns this into a interrogation about Percy. He keeps asking pointed questions. He asks if she was involved in drugs. Right. And he reveals he talked to Percy's mother. And the conversation really starts to get heated on multiple different levels. And Zanya is trying to steer it away from this, but Harry keeps bringing it back. Sure, because that's why he's here. Right, right? Yeah, He's basically. trying to get answers. 
Um, Colin says that uh, he would have known if Percy was on drugs because he's 18 months sober. Mm. I mean, obviously he didn't know because she was doing drugs. Yes. <laughs> but uh, so we learned that about him. He's 18 months sober, but apparently uh, Sean is doing drugs. So that's where there's some tension between the brothers. One of them is sober and the other one is not. Um, so that's causing some conflict between them. And of course, the stuff that we don't know about yet is right. what's at the base of their uh animosity yeah mm -hmm. so uh yeah uh basically harry brings up the roommate's feeling the roommate that we met in this caroline, episode yeah caroline uh that someone was after her uh and a lot of this is news to sean who is not happy as the dinner so goes along apparently meg and colin are keeping secrets from sean mm -hmm. so it comes out during this conversation that meg and Colin are the ones who went and picked her up and brought her home. Mm. Uh, and Sean didn't know any of this. Right. He was completely left in the dark. He thought she came home on her own. He had no idea that they went and picked her up. And uh, Meg's saying, oh, well, she called me and she wanted me to come get her. Right. But now the suspicion's out there. Harry's thinking, or are you the ones that, you know, trashed the room and you forced her to come back? Right. So now he's thinking that the hooded figure might be uh, her Uncle Colin. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, so Sean is increasingly getting angry, but Colin says that they were basically cleaning up his mess because he's constantly drunk. And they say that that night, uh, Colin was actually passed out in the woods, is why he doesn't Sean, know. Sean was passed out in the woods. Uh, yes. Colin said that Sean was passed out in the woods. Right. Uh, and Meg, at this point, thinks that dinner is over. Uh, Sonia gets ready to leave, but Harry wants to stay. Yeah, so he literally gives her the keys and is like, go ahead. After Meg was already like, okay, bye. Right. Like, he's not welcome here anymore. Right. But he's like, I'm just gonna stay. You can go home. And, uh, Sonia is clearly not happy with this turn of I mean, events. can you blame her? <laughs> no, no, absolutely not. Yeah, she shouldn't have been here in the first place. This is a bad idea. Neither uh, of them Harry. should have been here doing this over a family dinner. Mm -hmm. Like, if you want to talk about the case, talk about the case. Don't pretend it's a social call. <laughs> so Harry reveals that he's been following her, and she says the man was that uh, he saw her with giving her a, a envelope uh, was actually giving her a loan at the dock. And he, he keeps asking her questions and says that he lied to her. And then they are interrupted. Yeah, he, he confronts her yeah. about the fact that she knew about the gash mm -hmm. on Percy's head and says, you lied to me. You saw her that night. I know you did. So what's up? So this is the point in the series, the season where Meg and Harry are no longer friends. But again, this is going to change like it has every episode, basically. Uh, so they're interrupted by a fight going on in the lawn. Yeah, between, between... Sean and Colin, who are physically fighting now out in the yard. Um, how did they even get to the yard? Because weren't, wasn't Harry and Meg standing in the doorway? They must have gone out the back door. I, I guess. <laughs> uh, and uh, basically, uh, Colin has uh, Sean in a white chokehold and said, are we done? Like, can this stop now? Right. And then Sean tells Harry that he should be investigating Colin if he's investigating anybody. Yeah, course, so now Sean thinks Colin is involved in right. whatever happened to Percy. Meg tells Harry that he needs to leave now. And Harry finally does so. And, you know, it isn't that long be uh, af before, I mean, after uh, Sonya left. So right. he could have just left with her because he doesn't achieve anything Yeah, maybe else she's here. still sitting in the car waiting for him. Right, I doubt it. Oh, no, because we see him come yeah. home after and she's right. already there. So he must have walked home. <laughs> I guess. Meg tells Harry that, oh, yeah, okay, I just did that. Uh, we see a flashback to Meg and Percy. Right, so we're all going back now to the night that Meg mm -hmm. picked her up. And we're in the apartment, uh, and we see the mirror's already broken. So right. we don't see what happened there. The struggle's already happened. But we see that Meg's telling the truth. Percy is asking her for help. She's literally in this scene saying, please help me, I want to go home. Right. So she was telling the truth about that much, at least. Mm -hmm. um, you know, one thing we don't address in this series is the possibility that these flashbacks could be unreliable narrators. Yeah, who exactly... Who exactly is this happening? The pers What perspective are we seeing these flashbacks right. from exactly? Right. And, you know, seeing how the whole season plays out, I can say that we're supposed to take the flashbacks at face value. Mm -hmm. um, but it's hard watching it to know 
if that's the case or not. Right. Right. Because mm. any one of them could have, because sometimes a flashback is here's somebody testifying to Harry. And other times it's just them having a flashback. Right. Like this is not, this is an unmotivated flashback. We don't know. Nobody's telling Harry this information right. at this point. Right. So it's just, a, it's, they're just telling yeah. us. Right. Um. So yeah, you can take all the flashbacks in this series at their face value that we're literally seeing what happened. Um, but it just as easily could have been where we can't trust anything we see in these, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. So Harry returns home to Sonia, who's pissed at him. Can't really blame her. She didn't like what she saw. She didn't appreciate his tactics. And he, she feels like he shouldn't have dragged her into it. And she's right. She's right. Um, I have one more thing to say uh, before we before we go on is is that night in the flashback again where Meg brought Percy back home to the island. She tucked Percy into bed. Mm. And as Meg was leaving, she heard Percy pleading with someone who wasn't there mm -hmm. to leave her alone and please go away. Right. So Percy's mysterious... Uh, person? Stalker? Yeah, this person that she's been avoiding, this hooded figure, in, in the flashbacks at least. We did our first hint now that, oh, wait, She's talking to someone who's not there, mm. um, which, of course, becomes very important as we keep untangling this mystery. Right. Um, now, we know there is a hooded figure in, in a videotape. Yep. Um, so there is, like, stuff going on there, but maybe there's more to it, what Percy's been explaining about, you know, what she's dealing with right. during those three months. Because here she is saying, please go away. Leave me alone. There's nobody there. Right. Meg just tucked her in. There's nobody in the house. Mm-hmm. You know, it's funny. Um, at this point, we can kind of conclude that maybe Percy is the one that trashed uh, the room. Right. And, and, are... and I think that's what happened, right? Yeah. But it's not 100% clear at this point right. that that's the conclusion you can take away from this. So, uh, Sonya thinks the case is bringing out the ugly side in him. And perhaps, but that's just the investigator. This is his process. Right. That she's unfortunately seeing for the first time. And she right. doesn't like what she because sees. Because ever since they've been together, he's quit. <laughs> right. Well, not only that, but she wouldn't have been involved in his work to this sure. extent. And she should have stayed uninvolved. Right. But, like, every case he takes, yeah, this is how involved he gets. Yeah. It takes over his life. Right. He's not capable of, you know, just having a day job mm -hmm. as a detective. It encompasses him completely. Right. Um, since... Hence, you know, the fact that we have a whole series about it. <laughs> so, I mean, he took the wrong approach here. He he in, he dealt with that by bringing her in rather than maintaining some kind of separation. Sure. So, I mean, he's not really dealing with this any better than any of his other cases, basically. Right. And uh, the only difference is he has a relationship and he does yeah. have other responsibilities. Not, and not for long. Not for long. Yeah. And he doesn't know how to balance that. Right. I mean, he hasn't been home for 24 hours. Right. <laughs> yeah. And when he does come home, he sudden, he's like pulling her into the case. Like they right. didn't get five minutes together without the case. Right. Yeah. So uh, Harry is working on something and Sean ends up showing up at the house. Sean says he has something to tell him. He reveals that they lied about not having seen Percy that night. Obviously. <laughs> right. We, we know that. Uh, Percy. But someone's was, admitting it now. Right. Percy was confronting him about some stuff, and Sean says it was about his drug use. Sean, after being confronted, needed a fix because he was really upset. So he, he, drove... he was upset because Percy was upset with him. Right. So he drove Percy's car to Diaz's. Yeah. Or that's his name, D right? Diaz. Diaz. Okay. Diaz's. Right. <laughs> And Sean says that Percy and Colin were always close, but won't elaborate on that. Yeah, that was a very kind of ominous statement to throw right. out there. Uh, Harry asked him if Meg sent her, or sent him rather, and he says he was trying to be a good son. Uh, so that's pretty much a confirmation that Meg, in fact, did send him. Uh, at least that's, that was my takeaway. Was that your takeaway as well? Uh, he's just being very cryptic, right. right? Like, he's here to confess something, but you also know he's not giving the whole story. Right. You know there's a lot more going on between the Muldoon family. Mm -hmm. uh, Percy's hallucination talks to Harry. She says, you can see why I needed an escape, and that it looks worse the more he looks into it. Harry suggests maybe she's on a beach somewhere. She says, running never solves anything, especially for him. What does that mean exactly? Uh, he's trying to run away from 
from the case, from his wife, from his tendencies mm. to over investigate. I don't, I don't know. Okay, I kind of don't remember all of Harry's through lines, to be honest. Gotcha. <laughs> so we see, we cut to a scene of a couple of men who so are this clearly is the next morning. Yeah, and we're uh, near the cliffs where right. Percy, where Harry saw Percy jump in episode one. So these men, they're clearly a couple. They're looking for oysters. Mm -hmm. And we uh, pan over, and nearby, a body washes up on shore. Uh, it's pretty clear who this person it's a, is. It's a face-down body. It yeah. could be anybody. But we pretty much know. Uh, and the episode ends right then and there. All right, so these two men I'm going to talk about. Okay. Very insignificant in the episode. Kind of don't know why we all of a sudden have a scene watching these two men kiss on the shore. Right. It was a little weird. Yeah. And displaced. Well, I mean, maybe it's uh, a justification for how Percy was found. I mean, did, because... they didn't find her, though. But it, it's near them. So are we supposed to believe they're going to find her? I, I guess. Because they're not in the next episode. They're only in this episode. Mm. <laughs> and, um, like, when we got to the scene, I was like, who are these people? Is this a commercial? Like, what was right. happening? <laughs> uh, but no, it's just these two men in this one 10-second scene. And they are credited as the taller guy and the shorter guy. <laughs> oh, well, that's very, uh, very interesting credits yeah. there. So very insignificant characters to this story. But I want to talk about these actors. Taller guy is played by, ooh, Stefan Gaudet. Gaudet. Okay. Only episode. He is in two episodes of From. Hmm. Credited in two episodes anyways as a colony house resident. He's probably in more than two episodes as, right. as background, but that means he had speaking parts in two episodes. Those episodes being uh, 102 and 107. Okay. Quite possibly his character died <laughs> yeah. because most, you know. A lot of people died. A lot of people died in that seven. episode. Yeah. Uh, so that's significant to oh, me okay. because he's yeah. got credits in From. He also is in an episode of Digstown and an episode of Moonshine. Um, so he is part of the Frumily. Again, that's going to try saying the name again, Stefan Gade. Pro sounds, sounds probably French. saying it very wrong. So if anybody listening knows this person, and I'm betting there are people listening who knows this person, how freaking cool is that? Yeah, yeah. Tell us how to pronounce that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, shorter guy is played by Anthony McPherson, and uh, he only has four credits to his name. Um, one of them being, no, sorry. He only has one other credit to his name than this, which is four episodes okay. of the current series, uh, Sugar Highs. And that's, I, I saw a preview for that. I think they're like male escorts or something. Oh, okay. It's another Canadian series that um, I believe the CW is airing. Oh. I, I could be wrong about that, but I think that's what it is. Another one of those. Um, so yeah, the, don't know why shorter guy and taller guy are there, but happy to see a frummily face. Yeah, there we go. Uh, the only other person that appeared in this episode was Man in Suit. And I'm not positive who that is. My best guess is that's the person that Meg was getting money from. Yeah, But probably. I don't recall that person speaking or if he was wearing a suit. Right. But there's a credit for Man in Suit, so whether it's him or somebody else. Uh, he's played by Darren Jones, and his only other credit is an episode of Chicago Fire. Gotcha. And I found it really interesting that uh, a lot of our main characters weren't in this episode. Right. None of the lambs were in this episode. Um, we didn't see Brandon or the, the doc girl, M. Like, mm -hmm. they they play big roles, I know, as we go forward. But this episode was just such a bottle episode as far as looking at that brief moment in Percy's history mm -hmm. where really, you know, we focused on her mom and, and her roommate and all of that. Yeah, this, and, this is the Harry Stocks Meg episode, basically. Yeah, it, it's funny. Just, I don't remember it playing out this way at all. <laughs> no? Yeah, I mean, like, a lot of my memories of what happens here is pretty fuzzy. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I, I find that I remember a lot of the details and people kind of incorrectly compared to what actually seemed to actually transpire. Yeah, I, I, I in my memory thought we like revisit the mom a couple times, right. and and I thought like the stuff we learned in this episode about those three months we learned over time slowly. Apparently, right. we, that's not the case. Nope, all at once. <laughs> um. So yeah, I kind of don't know where we're going, even though I know where we're going. So <laughs> right. it's kind of fun to yeah, revisit yeah. this in that manner. Mm hmm Yeah, so uh, next week, uh, we're probably not going to have a uh, another episode of uh, the, the Sinner. Uh, 
You have some plans going on. Yes, my sister is getting married next And again, week. I should have shouted her out at the top, <laughs> but failed to do that. But hey, we're doing that at the end, basically. So yeah, your sister's getting married. You're going to be quite busy. I'm going to be very busy for the next week or so. So yeah, there will be a slight delay in us getting the next episode out. But uh, it'll be there eventually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and in the meantime, you can go back and check the second episode of the series, or the first one. Uh, a lot of people didn't watch the second one, probably because I didn't add tags until well after the fact. Mm. So that that definitely hurts you know, the view count. You know, people will find these episodes eventually. Yeah, eventually. Eventually. Well, we're going to share this one out um, to all our from groups because Jimmy McGuire's in it. Yes. So we got to point that out. I don't yep. think a lot of people know that. No, probably because, not. Because, you know, he doesn't get a credit for it. Mm -hmm. So it's not listed on his IMDb or anything like that. Nope. So, and yeah. that's something we were talking about is I really, really wish there was some sort of an IMDb type of system for background actors. Or even theater actors. Like, it would be good to see. There, You know, there is some kind of system for, for theater. I don't know mm -hmm. how accurate it is, but it is something I uh, I dug into a little bit when we, when we went to the theater last. Mm -hmm. And I was trying to look up the actors in that play. And there is a website. I forget what it's called now because this wasn't something I was prepared to talk about. But there is a website that lists like credentials for stage actors gotcha yeah i mean like yeah we definitely background actors because you know we we talked to some of these people like yeah. faith and jamie mcguire and it'd be nice to know what they were actually in yeah and it's, and no, it's no, not always the easiest no thing to public yeah. not record of that it's not always since, the easiest, you know they don't technically have credits yeah. I mean, it's not always the easiest thing to spot back background actors, sure, yeah. actresses, or actors. I mean, we never would have spotted Faith if she wasn't like, hey, I'm in this scene, and I'm in this right, scene, and exactly. I'm in that scene. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And Jamie McGuire, it's amazing that you spotted him at all. I'm quite proud of myself for yeah. that, because usually I'm really horrible at, at like picking people out mm -hmm. like that. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I recognized him right away. I was very proud of that. And of course, you know, he has this very memorable smile now that I think yes. all From fans uh, know what he looks like. Even yep. the people that don't even know his name. I'm sure there's lots of people who are like, hey, I recognize that guy. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> yep. All right. So any other further thoughts about this episode? Uh, no, I just, uh, I can't wait to keep going with this mystery because mm -hmm. uh again it's playing out different than i remember and it's kind of exciting knowing where we're going to see some of these clues dropped right you know that mm -hmm. the first time going through i probably didn't pick up on the way i'm picking up on them now right all right so we would like to hear from you stacy can be reached at i can be reached on twitter x instagram and threads at tvn coupon talk if you like this video and want to support the channel, there are a number of ways to do so. You can follow me on Twitter at Core Productions. You can join one of my Corn Productions Facebook pages. You can buy something from the Corn Productions store on Zazzle. You can buy me a copy. You can join the Corn Productions membership for 99 cents a month. And of course, you can like, share, and comment on this video as well as subscribing to our channel. This is Dave and Stacy from Corn Productions signing off.